Jesus Christ, of course. Thank you, Father God. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus. There is no other name but Jesus. That name gives us liberty. That name makes us whole. That name gives us a sound mind. That name is the one that died for us, our blessed Savior. We thank you for the blood that he shed on the cross. We thank you because of that blood, our sins is forgiven. And now, Lord, they're washed away. And now we can say that we are filled with the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Lord, we love you this morning. We respect you and we honor you. Father, we came in one way. Allow us to leave another. In the name of Jesus, I pray and all God's people say, Amen and amen and amen. It is our custom here at Seeing the Impossible Faith Center to give God a wonderful applause. I want to <laughs> greet all the viewers on YouTube, Facebook, Google+. Thank you for tuning in. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Greg Marilla, and I have a word for you today. Amen. But meanwhile, let's open up our Bibles. And if you don't have a Bible, there's one in front of the pew. Praise the Lord. And those of you at home or wherever you at uh, watching the, the video, uh, take out your Bible and get yourself a journal. Let's, let's take some notes. Uh, a short pencil is better than a long memory. Praise God. So uh, let's go and, and get ready to go into the Word of God. Praise God. Amen. Um, God has given us a new series, and the name or the aim of this series is called How to Carry the Torch for the Father. How to Carry the Torch for the Father. By the way, this week, uh, these past three days were amazing. We had a wonderful time in camp meeting. A lot of interesting things happened. Boy, I tell you. And uh, I thank God for it. Uh, uh, when I was in the presence of God at camp meeting, I just kept hearing him say to me, uh, I'm allowing you to go through the process. I'm allowing you to go through the process. Preparation before destination. I'm allowing you to go through the process. And I feel that word is not only for me, but it's for everyone here. Some of us are going through the process. And the process may hurt, but it's okay. It's for preparation. It's for your preparation. So, the aim today is how to carry the torch for the Father. And uh, I want to start by saying, if you desire to grow spiritually... You must learn how to hear from the Father. How do you do that? Well, you go into prayer. You read your word. A um, good place to start is uh, starting in the book of Proverbs. There's 31 chapter in the book of Proverbs. So if today is uh, the 23rd, then read Proverbs 23rd. I say, a proper a day will keep the devil away. All right? A proper a day will keep the devil away. So for those of us here and those of us watching, if you desire to grow spiritually, you must learn how to hear from God the Father. All right? Now, Jesus, the Son of God, his anointing, is so strong and so wonderful and so alive. That anointing has the power to release a spiritual DNA that produces legacies of sons and daughter. So if God is in your heart, you are a daughter of God. If God is in your heart, man, 
men's. You are a son of God. All right? That's your DNA. It's in your DNA. Praise the Lord. But, once again, we need to learn and understand the pattern of God that God has for the church. God has a certain pattern, and we have to follow that pattern. So, my prayer today is that you will catch this teaching, catch the vision of this teaching, and commit to learn so that you can carry the torch for the Father. Praise God. Now, let's go into the Word of God. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, please. I have two Bibles up here, as you know. I have a King James and I have a New Living Translation. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. And you can read out of the King James or the Amplifier, whatever Bible you have in front of you. Now, you know I am a King King James person. I was raised with King James. <laughs> That's the right Bible. But you have many translations, and, and the reason why you have many other translations, good translations too, uh, is to uh, make the word, the pronounce. Bible, King James, make it simple for you to understand. So in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, uh, verse 15, please. And I'll give you time to get there. And when you get there, just give me a wonderful amen. Amen. Wow, you guys are fast this morning. Wonderful. Great. All right, let's read the word. Everyone is there. The word is read in the New Living Translation. He says, For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. Somebody praise the Lord. One spiritual father. Then Paul goes on saying, For I have become your father, He had the power and the authority to say that. In Christ Jesus, when I preach the good news to you, Corinthians. So today the word of God is going to come into your heart like a gift from the Father. Praise the Lord. He says, you have many teachers, but I feel that I've given birth to you. That's what he said, Apostle Paul. And this is why I'm writing this letter the way I am writing this letter. I want to catch your attention. That's what he's saying. Now, please, if you can be so kind and go to Galatians 4.19, we'll understand a little bit more. So we're going to go to Galatians, the book of Galatians, which is right next to uh, Ephesians. That's in the back of the Bible. Galatians 4.19. Galatians 4.19 right next to Ephesians right next to 2 Corinthians praise the Lord yes sir Galatians 4.19 Mm-hmm. Now, here Paul says, Oh, my dear children, <laughs> I feel as if I am going through labor pains for you. Again. And they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. If you have a desire to grow spiritually, you must develop the Christ in you. 
See, Father God is concerned with you. He's concerned with your restoration. And, biblically speaking, historically speaking, in the record, in the Bible, there is two type of people whom, related by the covenant of God, the Old Testament and the New Testament, God is concerned. God is concerned in two type of people. He's concerned for Israel, the Jews, and he's concerned for us, the church. Praise the Lord. Now, Israel still haven't recognized Jesus as Lord. They're still waiting for the Messiah. But that is between them and Father God. You, the church, have received his son as Lord and Savior. So that means we need to submit to his lordship and allow the Holy Spirit to develop the Christ in us. Praise the Lord. So God's intention for us is to have a perfect heart. That word perfect in the Greek means blameless. He wants us to have a blameless heart. Every one of us here are capable of having a blameless heart for the Lord. Is it easy? <laughs> the pastor's in the hot seat. No, it's not, Father. Is it, is it cap am I capable? Am I able to do it? Yes, I can do it. And so can you with a little training of the word of God. All right? Now, this goal that God has for us is for eternity. It's not just for here, this time space. See, from dust you came, dust you return. But your spirit, which is the breath of life, has to go home. Praise the Lord. All right? So, to become a perfect bride, that's his desire. We are the bride of Christ. Praise God. Yes. To become perfect brides. That's what I need to become, a perfect bride. You need to become a perfect bride for Christ. We are going to have to learn how to look into the mirror. There's a mirror God gave us. And that mirror is called the Word of God right in front of you. This mirror is so wonderful it diagnoses our problem. And our problem has always been sin. Sin is our problem. See? God's word which I call it a mirror reveals our inward spiritual condition. When I'm feeling depressed I've got to go into the Word. Yeah, I know I show my butt. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. After I show my butt, I promise you that I go into the Word. Something happens when you expose something inside of you that is not supposed to be exposed. If you have Christ inside your heart, something happens. It's called conviction. The Holy Spirit convicts you and tells you, Greg, you know you, you were not supposed to do that. You were not supposed to do that. So now repent. That means ask for forgiveness. And change your ways and move forward. Okay? So, what does, the mirror do? What does this mirror do? It allows me to see inward. I can see my problems from the inside, inside out, instead of seeing them from the outside in. For you to get to know God, or for you to have a better life, it's going to start from the inside. Everything starts from the inside. Everything starts from here and here. See? You have to see yourself the way your Father in heaven sees you. 
You're not a, okay, how can I say it, Lord? You're not a mistake. You're a masterpiece. There's no one else like you. You're one of a kind. <laughs> you are his workmanship. You are his masterpiece. So stop saying you're too this and you're too that and you're too ugly and you're too fat and you're too skinny and you don't have right teeth and you don't... Stop it. God doesn't make messes. He makes masterpiece, and I'll show you. But before I take you to that scripture, I want us to go into the Old Testament. Let's go to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, uh, uh, chapter 16. Thank you, Father. Chapter 16. 1 Samuel 16, okay, it's right next to Kings, 1 Samuel 16, you're not a mess, you're a masterpiece, that's right, have you made right choices in your life, no, we all have fun fallen short from the glory of God. That's what the book of Romans chapter 6 says. Paul said, we all fallen short. That means we all have made mistakes. Every one of us here has made a mistake. I know I have. <laughs> Can I get a witness? We all have made mistakes. But what matter is that we're still here and what matter is that we're going forward what really matters is that we're forgetting those things that are behind us and we're pressing and reaching for the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So don't look down. Don't look around. Look up. That's what you need to do. Look up. <laughs> your strength comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from the ground. It doesn't come from your environment around you. It comes from God. God is the source of your strength. If the truth be known, where will I be if it wasn't for God? Most of us probably would be sleeping in the grave. But God had mercy and grace. Grace and peace came upon you. Grace and peace, family of God, came upon you through the reconciliation when he reconciled you at the cross. The cross. And then when he shed the blood, he redeemed you. Atonement. He washed away your sins. Remember in the Old Testament, I'm going to do some Bible teaching now. Remember in the Old Testament, uh, you had to go to the priest in the old tabernacle. And the priest would stand there and have two ministers, and you will bring a sacrifice. It could be a lamb, a ram, dove, a bird, whatever you can afford. And you will bring that to the priest, and the priest would take that sacrificial sacrifice and slaughter it in the altar. And that blood, I don't know how they did it. I mean, I love animals. And that blood ran from his neck, to the altar, to the ground. And that covered your sin for one whole year. As the priest was, can I say, killing this poor animal, the person was laying their hands, read your Bible, it's in the Old Testament, on top of the head of that sacrifice, and that means that that person was transferring all their sin for that year on that poor little animal, and that poor little animal was paying the penalty for their sin. Well, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus paid the price for us. But he was crucified on that cross. Jesus not only was the sacrificial sacrifice, but Jesus was the high priest. And he told Dad, Dad, I'll go down there for them. There's not one clean priest down there. I'll go down there. 
I'll allow myself to be crucified so they can receive forgiveness. Praise the Lord, somebody. That Jesus did it for me and did it for you. All right, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. He says this in the Old Testament book. The Old Testament was written in the Hebrew, and the New Testament was written in the Greek. And the reason why God did that is because the Jews are very emotional people. I think I got part Jew in me. <laughs> well, I am a Jew in the spirit. We all are spiritual Jews here. So the Jews are very emotional, and the Greeks are very intellect. They're very smart. So God wanted to stimulate your mind in the New Testament, and he wanted to deal with your emotion in the Old Testament. So 1 Samuel 16, verse 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. He was rejecting David's brother. He says, For I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them, People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord does not see of man see, as man see, excuse me. For man look at the outward appearance, but the Lord, the Father, looks at the heart. So we need restoration in the heart so that we can become blameless. And if we keep looking at this mirror, this mirror, the word that is in this mirror, allows me to see me when I open it up. And it's just like a doctor. It diagnosed something inside of me. It said to me, the, the mirror told me, you have a problem, pastor. You have sin." But I have a remedy for that sin, and that remedy is my son, Jesus Christ. Good place to praise the Lord right there. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your works, Father. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, keep looking at the mirror. The mirror will reconcile you to the cross, to the Father, through Jesus Christ. And it will show us our unclean, sinful condition. What do you think? Just because I'm behind this pulpit and I don't have a condition? There's conditions that I have every day that I say to myself, Lord, you've got to help me with this. Remove that out of my mouth. I recognize it, though, see? Some of us don't recognize our condition. So we continue doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And guess what? That's crazy. We say we're drawing closer to God, but actually we're drawing closer to the world. Because we're putting the things of this world first before we put the things of God first. Remember, it works from the inside out. The outside can't help me. I got to go into the inside. That's where he's at. He's at my inside. And I have to become one with him. As I become one with God, see, atonement, that's what really that means. If you break it down in three syllables, at one meant atonement. His desire is to be one with him. So when you become one with God, God becomes one with you. All right? And when you do that, now you can sincerely say that you are a new creation. Or the old test, uh, uh, excuse me, the old uh, King James pronounced English uh, standard says a new creature. Or a new living soul. <laughs> I love that word. A new living soul. When the Bible talks about the soul, he's not talking about the spirit. He's talking about 
your feelings, your emotion, and your will. Your soul is three-part emotion, feeling, and will. So really, your soul is here. And your spirit is in your heart. He blew breath into the man's nostril. I think Job uh, 33, verse 4, or verse 8 says, he gave life to man. So when God breathed breath into you and I, daughters and son of God, you know what he desired? A love relationship. I have a love relationship between him and I. And I thank him for it. So let's start learning how to experience new way of living and doing and working life for him. Let's start being part of the solution and not part of the problem. Let's get moral and ethic back into us. Let's become the Americans that God is calling us to be. Praise the Lord. Proud of the blue, the red, white, and blue. The white which represents purity. The, the red which represents the blood. And the blue represents God himself. That's why we have blue skies. Now, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, and I'm doing good in time, 5.17, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go back to uh, the end of the book almost. And let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. I can quote it for you, but I'd rather go there and let's dissect it and, and let's uh, articulate it. Let's, let's, let's make this thing bigger than what it is because really it is big. You have to be in the spirit mind. You have to be spirit minded to understand the word of God. I'll say that again. You have to become spiritual minded. That means, well, what does that mean, Pastor Gregory? That means that you have to, when you're getting into the Word of God, you have to just focus on that, what you're doing. Focus. Remember, um, your balance comes from heaven into your head. Your head, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your heart, your stomach. You need to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God so that when you are around those teaching the Word, no one can come and give you a phony doctrine. You need sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Now, here in, in this group, we have a different denomination, and that's fine. But there's one Father, one Son, and one Holy Spirit. Oh, by the way, and one Word. So don't twist it like you, you know, your religion or tradition can hold you back. I'm not being disrespectful to anybody. I'm just saying, if it's not in the word of God, if it's not in the King James, I don't want to hear it. I need to find it in the mirror. The mirror will tell me. The mirror shows my image. Every time I, the mirror don't lie. Gosh, there's times in, in the morning when I get up and, and I'm shaving and fixing my, my goatee and, and fixing my hair. I look at myself in the mirror and says, where's all my hair? I had a lot of hair. Where is it? Okay. All right. I think it's Leviticus uh, 42.13 says, a bald man is a clean man. <laughs> Can I make myself happy? <laughs> When I see folks with nice hair, I'm like, boy, he's got nice hair. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But God gives to everyone as they deserve. Okay, here we are, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Let's read the word, and the word reads like this. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone. And new has begun. And the King James says, If thou art in Christ, you are a new creation. The old things has passed away. The old thing has passed away. And the new has come. So you, either you like it or not, 
are in a new place. Come on now. You're not even where you used to be last year. Or two, three, four, five years ago. We have precious memories that will never go away. But the truth be known, God is dealing with you right now and he's restoring you for such a time as this. We have a responsibility. Every one of us here has responsibility. Some more than others, but we still have responsibility. You must be desperate for yourself to learn about God. I can't be desperate for you. You have to be desperate for yourself. And if you claim to be a child or a son or a daughter of God, then you have to understand that you are a new person. That means you're going through the process. This is what I say. You have to learn how to join the corporation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How do you uh, join this corporation? By cooperating with them. Very simple. Very simple. You cooperate with them, they will cooperate with you. You don't cooperate with them, then you fall on their mercy. I'd rather have grace. I'd rather have favor and peace than just have mercy. I'd rather have grace and peace. Peace of mind. Grace means walking in the blessing. Grace means unmerit favor. Grace means I received a gift. I didn't have to work for it. Every one of us here have received the grace. You got saved by grace. And if you had to work for it, it's not grace. Now, technically, some people get upset with me when I tell them this, especially uh, co-workers uh, in, in the Lord. Uh, I tell them, really, there's only two types of religion. The law of Moses, the Old Testament, or the grace of Jesus Christ and the New Testament. Either I fall in the law or I fall on the grace. Now let me tell you about the law. <laughs> the law was made for lawbreakers. So if you break the law, it was made for you. And all of us at one time or the other have bro broken the law. The law says an eye for an eye, an ear for an ear, a tooth for a tooth. Whatever you do to me, I'm allowed to do it to you. But grace says, turn the other cheek. Grace says, love your enemies. The law says, hate them if they hate you. See the difference? So really, there's only two religions. I call it the law of Moses, which is called divine justice. And I also call it grace. Walking in God's grace. Jesus Christ is our grace. Praise the Lord. All right. Another scripture. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. You're not too far away from Ephesians if you're in 2 Corinthians. Turn the page to the right and you'll find it. Ephesians 2.10. I love this scripture. Wow, this, this one really excites me. 2.10, i got to find it. Ephesians 2.10. Here we are. Good. I like the old King James. He says... We are his workmanship. Workmanship. So don't call yourself a mess. You're his masterpiece. You are unique. You are one of a kind. There's no one like you. You are not here by coincidence. You are alive because you have a purpose from God. So... In Ephesians 2.10, it reads like this, For we are God's masterpiece. 
He has created us a us a new, a new, a new in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. See? Purpose? Purpose. So once again, if you look into the mirror of God, it will teach you to see how God sees. We've, we've had a problem. We've been seeing things the way we see it. And, and really is not really good. Because we have our own opinion. And our opinion is not God's opinion. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, I think Isaiah 55, he says, My ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. My ways are higher than your way. So let's see. Should I stay where I'm at, doing things my way? Or should I learn about this God? who's wonderful, who just wants the best for me, and start doing things his way. I have a daughter. I have to raise that daughter correctly. And it starts with me. She's going to imitate what I do. Whew. So I have a lot of checking to do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, if I can't do it for myself, I have to do it for her. See how wonderful God is? He'll make sure that you won't quit. He'll make sure that you have responsibility that you are so in love with. That responsibility is everything in your life. And you won't quit. You'll continue going forward. Stop looking behind you. It's in the tomb. What you have is today. And today will produce tomorrow. And please, when you wake up in the morning, be grateful. Give God thanks. Gosh, another day. No matter what waits you that day, give him thanks. An attitude of gratitude. Who wants to be around somebody grouchy and upset and always complaining? God have mercy on us. God have mercy. That's not, that's not his plan for us. That's not his purpose for us. It starts with restoration, I'm telling you. All righty. Let's go to, I have seven more minutes. Please bear with me. Let's go to the book of Exodus, Exodus 19. That's the second book in the Bible. Genesis means the beginning in Hebrew. Exodus means uh, going out, the leaving. I need to find this now. Exodus 19. There we go. Uh, we'll do 3, 4, and 5. How to carry the torch for the Father. We have to learn. We have to learn. You're going to find out the purpose of God's plan and goal right here. Actually, the Lord revealed himself in Exodus, Exodus 19. Not only to Moses, <laughs> but to us too. I'll show you. Are you there? Great. Verse 3. Then Moses climbed a mountain to appear before God. The Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the family of Jacob. Announce it to the descent of Israel. Israel is us, by the way, in the spirit. You have seen what I did to the Egyptian. You know how I carry you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Number five. Now if you will obey and keep my covenant, your Bible says, command you will be my own special treasure some translation says peculiar treasure treasure possession many translation here but really there's not a Hebrew word for this believe me I stood up to 2 o'clock in the morning looking for this thing I went into my old seminar books. I went here. I went everywhere. I'm like, and to the computers. I'm like, God, 
There isn't. And I felt, nope, there's not. Just different translation. So, God's desire for us is for us to be personal, peculiar, and special. And two keys you find out here. The first key is redemption. He told them, you yourself has seen what I did to the Egyptian. Oh, I wish you'd get this in the spirit. In other words, folks, no weapon formed against you shall prosper Amen. if you're for God. He says, and every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. Good place to say amen there. So those that come against you, those that talk about you, be careful. You're not going to be able to, you, you'll turn back and you won't even be able to find them. Because you belong to God, folks. Sons and daughters, you belong to the Lord. And he protects his people. And he says this, he says, You yourself have seen what I did to the Egyptian." And how I bore you on eagle's wing and brought you to myself. The key here is, he brought us to him. Now some of us don't want no part of him. We, we, we just don't believe it. We just don't understand. But the truth be known, he's always been there for you and me. Through the good and through the bad. Through the good, through the bad, oh God, he's been there. Thank you, Lord. So, what does he want? I'll tell you what he wants. He wants you to create a personal relationship with him. That's what he wants. It's so simple, folks. See, relationships are built. They have to be built. You have to build on a relationship. It's just not going to happen. That means I'm going to expose myself, you're going to expose yourself, and something's going to happen to each other here. Something's going to happen to me, something's going to happen to you, and I'm going to fall in love with you, and you're going to fall in love with the God in me, and I'm going to be in my assignment, and you're going to be in your assignment. No different with God. He's watching from heaven. He loves you. He wants you to talk to him. Why don't you talk to him? Just spend some time with him. Personal relation with him. Now the second purpose of redemption here is to redeem us into his own special treasure. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I take it real personal when he tells me he loves me. When I read that in the Bible, wow, God loves me. He loves me. Not only does he love me, he loves you too. With all his heart. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. <laughs> all right. The last scripture. The last scripture. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. That's the fifth book in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 32.9. Now, in the, uh, in the King James, he translated differently. Just bear with me. I have this Bible open now, so I'm going to read out of this New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Hmm. I love the New Living Translation even though I'm a King James person. No, I'm not contradicting myself, but I really do like the New Living Translation. I love the word. You're right. Guys, you're right. I do. Makes me happy. You know, there's times I said, why couldn't I have this in my heart when I was growing up in New York? Gosh. would have been a better son, a better person, period. 
Well, yeah, you're right. For such a time as this. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, verse 9. For the people of Israel belongs to the Lord. Jacob is his special possession. That's us. You know what I heard last night? Organic wholeness. That's us. Organic wholeness. What in the world are you saying, Pastor Craig? Pure. No pesticides. No, none of this chemical stuff in us. We got the blood of Jesus in us. Praise God. We have the blood of Jesus. That makes me whole. I'm an original organic wholeness. Personal Peculiar, special to God. All righty? Did you get enough notes? Good. Let me talk to the viewers out there. You viewers that are watching, especially on YouTube, if you don't have Christ in your heart, this is your opportunity. Just pray with me. Say this. Lord Jesus, I know that you died on the cross for me. I want you in my life. Wash away my sins, give me a new start, and from this day on, I will submit to your lordship. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, all God's people say amen, amen. Viewers, I'll see you real soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Good.